A housing deficit occurs when a country's housing units are in limited supply. The causes of the deficit include lack of favorable government policies, high cost of construction materials, high property costs, and the lack of access to credit for potential homeowners. In Nigeria, however, access to affordable housing has largely stayed a pipe dream for the vast majority, particularly the middle and lower classes, which takes about 80% of the populace. The matter of housing deficits has gotten worse over time, with successive governments grappling with it. The CBN has estimated an amount of 21 trillion naira will be needed to finance this deficit, and with a growing population of 200 million Nigerians, the current deficit is extremely high. Uh, joining me now is Olado Tsun Oloyede, an Oxford University trained real estate investment expert with a remarkable track record of creating real estate solutions for over 3,000 individuals in Nigeria and beyond through land schemes and property acquisition. His visionary leadership has empowered countless people to unlock dreams and achieve their property goals. Currently, he is spearheading one of the most ambitious real estate development in southwest Nigeria, a colossal project comprising 1,000 unit housing developments in Nigeria. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome all La Dotsun Oloyedi. Thanks for joining us on Business Insight. Thank you, Justin. Good to be here. Yeah, it is indeed a pleasure. But it is really worrying to note that uh, we have over 28 million <coughs> housing deficit as at uh, the figures put uh, mm. in January this year. And uh, according to the CBN, we need about 21 trillion naira. How do we go about bridging this gap? Thank you, Justin. Before you talk about, before you talk about bridging the, mm. the gap, yeah, um, I'm one of the persons that argue that, that, that data. Is it higher? No, I think it's higher because okay. that, that's on a, on, a, on a quantity basis that mm -hmm. people who don't have roof over their head. Okay. If you begin to look at people, if you begin to look at where people live, the quality of the housing itself, yeah. you realize that the deficit is way more than that. So on a qualitative basis, the deficit is way more than that. Yeah. So, and it's talking about bridging the gap. Firstly, we, we need to synergize. Uh, we need to continually talk about this thing. There has to be, they, I don't think there are enough conversations. Okay, even before you go about um, answering the question about bridging the gap, I need to even understand how we got to this uh, uh, wide uh, gap as it is. Yeah, cu currently, Nigeria, Nigeria housing production per year is less than 100,000 oh, units really per so year. And if you compare that with the almost 3.5 growth in population every year, mm -hmm. it's not matching up. Population is growing astronomically. Housing production is reducing. Mm. So that's where the deficit keeps coming from year in, year out. So, and to really bridge this gap, we need to continually talk about this. I don't think we have enough conversations about this. Mm. Secondly, there's need for collaboration. We need synergy between private sector and public sector. So over time, there has not been synergy? So not enough. You know, but presently, it, sometimes it often looks like the private and the public sector are in competition. And it shouldn't be. There's need for synergy because um, there's just so much the government can do on their own and there's just so much the, the pr private sector can do. Yeah. But when these two come together, yeah. there's so, so, so much that can be achieved. Yeah. And thirdly, there's need to streamline the process of land acquisition and tie to perfection building approval. Yeah. That is the base for housing production. Even looking at that, uh, do you really think uh, we might really uh, get a headway in that? Because from the way it is uh, stipulated in our constitution, all lands belong to the government and the bottlenecks are crazy. No, it's, it's, it's so chaotic, Bruno. You know? It's so chaotic yeah. and it's so expensive. Hmm. So there's need to streamline this thing. That's the basis of... And, 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 and it goes back to the synergy that I talked about. We are not in competition. You know, I, I think the, the government is more of a regulatory body when it comes to this thing. But it sometimes seems like government is probably profit-driven when it comes to this thing. And that sort of colors the intention and it becomes so chaotic. The bottleneck becomes so expensive. There's need to streamline this thing. Presently, for you to get a building approval yeah. for your project, you... <laughs> You stand a chance of doing other things yeah. to even before you can get that done. So there's need for us to streamline that process. Yeah. Government needs to come to the head of the private sector so that we are able to produce as much as much as possible. 
Okay, with the way things are right now in the country with uh, double uh, digit in, uh, inflation rates, I don't know, I see a situation where low income earners might be drifting backwards towards um, the hinterlands, uh, moving away from the, from the cities like Lagos because of um, this high cost of um, housing. What do you think? I don't think that's a bad thing, really. Okay. Um, we can't all congregate at the center. Okay. But here's the thing. In other places in the world, okay. infrastructure precedes development. But in this part of the world, it's the opposite. Mm. Development precedes infrastructure. So the first thing that needs to happen here, there's need for proper infrastructure and mm. access. So it won't matter where I live and where I work. Once there's proper access, there's proper transport system, mm. all these things aid development. A quick example, a reference point, is the railway between Lagos and Ibadan. Mm. I've not done the survey, but I can tell you there are a lot of people who commit that, through that um, transport system corridor mm. every day. Because it's easier. Why can't I stay in the bottom where cost of rent is lower, cost of axe production and, and, and buying a house is lower, and there's a smooth transportation system that gets me to Lagos. These are the infrastructure that will aid developers to go to those interlands and those far places and put proper housing solutions in place because the people will come there because they know that they can always access the center anytime they want. Let's talk about financing housing right now because most people, be they uh, in the informal sector or formal sector, almost everyone would want to be a landlord someday, yeah. uh, even if it's not in the major cities. But with all that is going on, I see a proliferation of uh, developers, housing developers, uh, bringing all sorts of solutions to people that you don't need to pay uh, one-off payment, maybe pay... Uh, you spread um, the payment over the years so that um, you don't have to fill um, all of um, the, the issues at the same time. But uh, is that really the best way to go? Mm. Because uh, some of those uh, uh, developers, uh, most of them are unscrupulous. And um, where do mortgages come in all of this? Yeah, let me pick it up where, from where you said, is that really the way to go? It's okay. a way, but not the best. Okay. Uh, be because be without developers, an average Nigerian, does not stand a chance of even owning a house. Oh, wow. Yeah, because the fact is, home ownership in Nigeria is less than 20%. Mm. Mortgage penetration, the mortgage you're talking about, is less than 2%. Oh, wow, that's so, so small. So, without the intervention of developers coming up with affordable pricing, flexible payment plan, you know, bridging the gap between you and government regulation, you know, sorting your money less and making sure all these things are just in front of you and giving you a simple payment plan, Without those schemes and those strategies, some average income earners will never even dream of owning a house. Mm. But having said that, there's need for us to look at the mortgage itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad recently that the mortgage has jumped to 50, 55 million naira from 15 million naira. You can access up to 55 million naira. But like I said, there's need for constant awareness and talk over this thing. Mm. Some people don't even know. The question, if you, if you ask an average Nigerian, how do you ask, is there mortgage in Nigeria? Most people tell you know. So whose responsibility is it to ensure that Nigerians are aware, they are sensitized about um, uh, these um, home financing scheme and mortgages? Because in the Western world, in other saner climes, as it were, you know, mortgages are the norm. People just uh, with uh, uh, a constant... Uh, maybe a uh, payment or not a yeah. personal payment as in if you have like a good credit and all that yeah. you could actually just spread payments over a long time like 15 to 20 years yeah there's uh, there's need for synergy the government okay. the private sector the banks the federal mortgage bank. there's need for synergy everybody works in isolation like a competition we need to synergize so that the proper awareness will go very far a lot i have a lot of clients and we recently did a survey asking them about mortgage in Nigeria, yeah. and you'd be shocked that more than 70% of them isn't aware that Is it, it is possible. awareness or maybe even the accessibility? So it's, a lot of people are not aware. They are still at the awareness phase. Okay. Before we not talk about the accessibility. Mm -hmm. Then people are aware. Some of them feel it's not accessible. Mm. But again, there is a way to this thing. But until we continually bring this to the fore and talk about this thing, Nigerians will know on these things. And until government themselves make it easy, even the accessibility part is yeah. chaotic. Oh, wow. The process needs to be simplified. Yeah. And if you're going to achieve meaningful gain yeah. in the housing sector in Nigeria, mortgage has to come in. Because the basis of all the problems we have in the real estate sector is finance. Yes, sure. Finance for the developer, finance for the end user, even the supplier, everybody in the value chain. Yeah. Financing is a problem. And until 
government comes in with a strong mortgage system, a stronger mortgage system, we might not be able to achieve I think meaningful development. Years, um, over in the 80s, we used to have mortgage banks. Uh, I yeah. only see or hear of them this day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's another problem we have in the country. Continuity, really. You mm -hmm. know, continuity over time, things, good initiative gets eroded. And um, right now, they're trying to bring it back. And um, the fillers from the government is they're going to be robust with mortgage, no credit system. These are the things that will really help Nigeria because liquidity is a thing now. It, it, it's a thing. Um, disposable income is very low. So to talk about home ownership now, it, it looks like it's a bad time. And this is the help that, that, that can aid people. Okay, so how do uh, uh, prospective home owners um, protect themselves? I, I'm getting somewhere because uh, right now, there have been stories over time where people call uh, others to just come and invest uh, in land ownership. Uh, you do uh, a little premium monthly, uh, so in the next five years, uh, you can actually get or start building your own uh, property. But I've heard reports of uh, unscrupulous uh, uh, developers who just want to collect money from people. How do we ensure sanity and ensure that um, when Nigerians are actually paying, they get value for their money? Yeah, yeah. Firstly, I would say um, regulation has to be stronger. And I'll tell you why it's a bit loose. Um, you know, when a regulatory body becomes profit-driven, there is there is chances, high chance they have of, business looking for profit. yeah, you know, it's, it, the, the goal of the body is yeah. to regulate and ensure people get value for their money. True. If you make money from it, it's secondary. Okay. So if money making is the first thing, then there will be serious problem. So regulation needs to be tighter around there. You know, uh, we know how handshakes happen and people can get away with things. All those things need to be cut away for any system any organization, any country that will have meaningful development, law and order is very important. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Secondly, the public, the people need to be aware. Self-education is important. Just like any business you want to do, you, you have no business doing anything without studying that thing first. That's another thing that I've gathered in my own study, is that an average Nigerian is not aware okay. to these things, to these gimmicks, to these how this thing works to their own right. They need to be aware. You need to understand the regulation, the laws, your rights, and everything. So that even you approaching the transaction, you have enough information. Then thirdly, you must use legal services. Legal services. Don't be stingy. Don't be cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are too cheap, you might be shooting yourself. You might be shooting yourself. Use legal services. If you, if you are not self-aware enough, you must seek for help. Let's talk about the current situation in the country. Everyone knows um, where the shoes are pinching right now, which are the double digits inflation, oh, yeah. the removal of fuel subsidy, and all of the other issues, macroeconomic issues, that uh, both businesses and um, even households are facing. Yeah. How have all of that um, affected uh, your business that's in building development or housing development and then payment plans? And uh, can you just share with us? Please? Firstly, it's affected the cost of construction. Okay. Um, I'm currently, we're currently working on a project, and um, the first round of um, procurement we did was at the price. Mm. And in the space of five weeks, we're doing another round of procurement. And it will interest you that it's gone up by 15 to 20%. Oh, that's a bit high. That's a bit high, you know? So, and that's the volatility mm. in, the, in the sector right now. And uh, like you said, in all the sector. The cost of construction, the impact of the inflation is that the cost of construction has gone really, really high. Mm -hmm. And that has impacted also the cost of delivery and the prices of this house. Mm -hmm. So where, places before where you could buy a house at a 40 million naira, right now you're buying at 60, 65 million naira. And flexibility that comes with payment is not so flexible anymore because the, the, we don't also have flexibility when it comes to this um, procurement of this thing. The volatility is so high. You want to do your procurement at once. You want your customers to pay, to pay at once. And this particular inflation has also led to failure of a lot of projects. A lot of projects. You see some project collapsing. It's compromised on quality. Why? Finance. Inflation. You see some projects abandoned because the cost overrun is unbearable. Okay, so as we round off right now, so what would you suggest? What are the preferable uh, solutions? Uh, you know, 
you talked about some synergy between the government and, of course, the private sector, but what other solutions are we looking at in one minute as we run down? Yeah, it, it's still two things, developmental funds, more developmental funds in the country. You know, most times developers have to rely on commercial funds to do their development project, and that is uh, a failure waiting to happen. There's need for a lot of developmental funds to be pumped into the development sector, and mortgage penetration needs to go up so that the end users are able to afford these houses. All right, mostly a very big thank you to you. Time is never your friend uh, yeah. when you are having fun or when you're uh, discussing salient issues. Uh, my guest has been uh, Olado Tron Olede. He is a real estate investment expert. Many thanks for all the useful insights that you have thank shared you, Justin. on the show for today. Thank you, Justin. It is indeed my pleasure. And that's the size of the show for today. Business Insights will return to your screen uh, tomorrow. Many thanks for being a part of it. Bye for now.